Growing up, I believed two things about myself. And this stuck with me, and it still sticks with me from time to time, except now I know it's a lie from the pit of hell. But growing up, I believed it. And that's probably why, the main reason why, I got involved in, in gangs. Growing up in Westminster, there was a lot of gangsters, even in high school. So starting out in junior high, I got involved in gangs. But the two things that, is this on? The two things that really, really hurt me. My dad and my siblings convinced me Bill, you're stupid, and you're useless. So I had to find a venue where I didn't think, where I didn't feel quite so stupid and, and useless, and that was the gangsters. And so I would do stuff just so they would think that I was cool. Breaking and entering. Thank God I never robbed a bank. I never stole a car. But I did steal. I did. Thank God I never raped anybody. And as Bob said, I never, uh, I never was arrested. That, to me, that was a miracle. That I was never arrested. Never used drugs. I certainly would have. But anyway... Um, the gangster lifestyle seemed like a good fit for me. And I, I, had, the, I had the right clothes, you know, um, khaki pants. In those days, it was khaki pants, Sir Guy shirt. I mean, you remember the Sir Guy shirt? And French toe shoes, which we kept spit shined. And I had the walk. I'm not going to demonstrate the walk, because last time I walked right off his screen. So. I had the walk, and they labeled me, and they meant, with all respect, my friends labeled me sleepwalk, because I had the walk, and I had the heavy high eyelids. And for some reason, people didn't mess with me. Um, I had the, that kind of a reputation. But anyway, the, the summer before my high school started, um, I had a divine appointment by the name of Bob Stevens. We're going to have eternity. I, I, I'll... I'll look him up and introduce him to you, but this guy was like an angel. I mean, he would, when he first came to Sigler Park where we hung out, he'd try to witness to me, and I wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. I never read a single verse of scripture, but I was convinced that the Bible was full of a bunch of fairy tales and all Christians were a bunch of sissies. And that's it. And every time he'd come around, he kept coming back. And the more he came back, the ruder and more insulting I was to him. I mean, my, most guys would just said, well, forget you. I mean, I, in so many words, I think I might have told him to just go to hell a few times. But um, he kept coming back. Yeah, the, thank you. The ruder I was, the more he kept returning. But every time he returned, it was with loving kindness. That's the one thing that stuck out about this guy. A few years older, he was an ambulance driver. And uh, I says, yeah, you can take me to lunch, <clears throat> but you're not going to. You are not going to mention the name of Jesus Christ. You are not even going to go down that gospel trail. I won't put up with it. So, okay, he said. So, so he took me to lunch many times. This went on for about a month. 
he stops by one evening and said, I have something I really want to show you. I'm thinking, well, let's see. He knows I don't have a car. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of what it was. So I got in with him, and he pulled, he pulled up to a church about 20 minutes later. He pulled up to a church. Big Banner said, Youth for Christ rally. What part of no doesn't this guy understand? You know? I mean, I, I thought I was very clear. And part of me wanted to punch him out, but there was another part of me that was a little bit curious. Why would he be so tenacious, so relentless in getting me down here and trick me? I mean, I was shanghai do you want to know the truth? So, yeah, God knew what it would take. I mean, God knew what it would take. Because uh, if I hadn't gotten saved, that, well, I went in, I heard the gospel for the very first time. Now, my heart was already starting to melt a little bit from this guy, Bob Stevens, keep coming back, coming back, coming back for more of my abuse. So my heart started to melt, but when I walked into that church, I mean, I, I all but collapsed. And I'm hearing the gospel for the first time. And it's so revealing. It's so convicting. And I found out about God's love. If I had a message for this talk, it would be overwhelmed by God's love. And that's what happened. I was so overwhelmed by God's love that when it came time, I ran down to the altar, poured my heart out. From that day forward, I had a memory verse that's still my memory verse to this day. Uh, I better make sure I get the address right. I think it's 1 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone's in Christ, say it with me. They are a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I went back to my senior year in high school. I didn't have to tell them, guys, I'm a Christian now. I can't hang out with you. I'm carrying a Bible now and telling them what, what God's done for me. Well, Bob Stevens didn't give up. I mean, he didn't quit on me either. He knew I didn't have a car. He said, well, I'll take you to church. I said, how about Bible study? I, I couldn't get enough. He took me to church. He took me to two different Bible studies. I could not get enough of God's word. The first night I got saved, he said, start reading John. I started reading the Gospel of John, and it took me until about 2 in the morning, but I read straight through the Gospel, and it was very eye-opening. Now, before I got saved, I was so hard-hearted that if I'd have been, you know, if I'd have been arrested and started through the, I probably would have, bro was talking about CYA, I probably would have ended up in CYA, and as I got a little older, I'd have probably ended up in prison, but here's the, here's the sad thing about it. If I had done a stand in prison, I'd have probably seen it as a badge of honor. I was, I was crazy. But uh, I met, shortly after I got saved, I met my wife of now 56 years. And that was a match made in heaven, I'm telling you. That was a match made in heaven. Because when I first met, I just, I asked her a few years ago, I says, sweetie, what, what was it that first attracted you to me? She looked at me seriously, because I was still, when she met me, I still had my gang attire. and just, I mean, I, I cleaned up my mouth and all that, but she said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> no attraction. <laughs> so I'm thinking, hmm, well then what, what changed? What changed, Linda? She said, well, 
I could see that God was doing a work in you. That God was changing your heart. And that was the attraction. Thankfully, that happened before we got married. So I ended up joining the Navy because we were practically engaged. So I joined the Navy. Now, I want to, uh, blessing after blessing after blessing after, I'm almost ashamed to admit it. I mean, you guys have been through some hard times. I've been through a few hard times. But God has blessed me upon blessed me upon blessed me. In fact, the scripture that says, um, 1 Thessalonians 5, I think it starts with verse 16. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, if I had not received another single blessing from the day I got saved, I would still have every reason to rejoice always. Because God looked down at me. I was, I not only was running from him, I wanted nothing to do with him. Nothing. And then I read about Paul. Well, he, he I mean, he signed the death warrant on some crazy, at least I didn't go that far. I mean, I'd, I'd disc him. I would cuss him out. I'd. So then, when I joined the Navy, uh, the guy said, you know, you're, you're going in as a seaman and apprentice. You don't understand. You're going to be chipping paint. Here's another blessing coming up, by the way. You're going to be chipping paint, probably, your, you know, until you make great. I went in as a seaman apprentice. By the time I made seaman, I wasn't chipping paint. I was called down to... Uh, called up to flag and got on the attack carrier with flag as their supply, supply yeoman. Normally, I asked around, normally you have to be third class to even, you know, be the supply yeoman. But I, I, I had fun going ashore and the admiral would have a list of stuff for me to pick up, the flag secretary would have a list of stuff for me to pick up. I'd have my own list of stuff to pick up. <clears throat> we were in, Vietnam's going on, and I end up in the Mediterranean for 10 months. Another blessing. Um, so we got married shortly. I had six months left to shore duty, and we got married. Best decision I ever made, other than coming to Christ. I mean, she's been my my counselor. She's been my support. She's been everything. So we got married, and what a blessing that was. And we both worked part-time. And because of my GI Bill, I got to go to college. Here's this stupid and useless guy. Now all of a sudden I'm going to college. It took us five years, but we both got our, our bachelor's degree. So then, with my degree, I'm thinking, okay, I used to think I was a gangster. I think I'd like to work with gangsters. So I hired on with the Orange County Probation Department. And I worked for them for 22 years, mostly supervising gangster teenagers and providing counseling to gangster teenagers. That was my calling. The amazing thing is, if I got their permission, I could share the gospel with them. I just needed their permission. I was blown away. I don't know if they're still doing that now, but... So I took a, I got an early pension from the Navy because my wife was starting a, a preschool. Well, she was starting a Christian school. At first, it went all the way up through eighth grade. So I thought, yeah, I can, I can uh, 
take a, get an early pension and help her with her school, help with the, um, well, I just saw a dog I recognized. No, wrong dog. I could help her uh, with teaching. One less teacher she'd have to hire. I ended up teaching third grade, but then when there became an opening, I got to teach uh, junior high. She said, wait a minute, Bill, you don't have a teaching credential. I said, well, I, all right, I'll, I'll make you a deal. If I take and pass the CBEST test, you let me teach, right? Yeah, I suppose. So I did well on the CBEST test, and we had our school for 20 years, and then my last job was a part-time job as uh, part-time concierge and part-time <clears throat> activities assistant. That was my favorite job I had. I worked with geriatrics over at Life Care Center. It's really changed since then. But I got laid off just before COVID. And what I like most about that job, I had a captive audience because they weren't going anywhere. So, you know, they even laughed at my jokes. But uh, the thing is, I did some real, I mean some real soul searching. Because of all the different, different job titles, titles that I had, I became too prideful. Now, if I'm going to be prideful about anything, it should be what? My identity in Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, now, that's something to be prideful about, right? But instead, I was prideful about the job I had in the Navy. I was prideful that I graduated from college. I was prideful about the Christian school I helped my wife run. I was prideful about being the concierge and activities assistant. All those things I call, it just it got in the way of me. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some really important roles. My most important role was as a husband. And beyond that, as a father and a grandfather. And in a couple of years, who knows, I could be a great grandfather. But all those roles are nothing compared to my identity in Christ. Because when I keep my priorities straight with my identity in Christ, what happens? I tend to love my wife more. I tend to love my kids more, my grandkids more, my Lord more. I learned that the more I, the more I get to know God, Still getting to know him, the more I get to know God, the more I tend to love him. Thank you, Lord. And the more I love him, the more obedient I tend to be. So, I mean, yeah, Lord, I love Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What's our most important commandments right now is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbors, ourselves. <clears throat> what could be more important than that? So, I'd like to share a few scriptures with you, if I may. Galatians 2.20, you guys all know it. I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. But it's not I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When I wake up in the morning, I, oh, there's my 20 minutes. How are we doing on time? OK, 
Okay, somebody. All right. If I see a thumbs up, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it up here. Um, this got me sidetracked. So I'm going to put it in my pocket and forgot I, forget I brought it. My um, crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. So, okay, the sixth chapter of Romans teaches us when we sin, we're forgiven. Ask for forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's grace. That's God's grace. But you know what another part of God's grace is? <clears throat> For me, this is the most important part. Well, no, I can't say that. Because it was by God's grace alone that I got saved. Yeah. But there's another important part of God's grace. And when you go home, read carefully through the sixth chapter of Romans. Because it talks about it talks about choices. Because of God's grace, we have choices. We have the choice to choose him or reject him. Once we've chosen him, we have the choice to obey him or not obey him. We have the choice to sin or not sin. And if we make the right choice, he empowers us to stick with that choice. Now, it's a constant struggle. I'm not going to stand here and say I don't sin because I do. But I'll give you one example. I used to worry quite a bit. You can ask my wife. My wife said, one of these days you're going to worry. You have nothing to worry about. Okay? So I would worry, worry, worry. But then when I realized God help me to not worry. Help me to not worry. I need your help. Confess. Confess. The, worry's a sin. Because it shows I'm not trusting God. So what I like to do now is work with guys one-on-one. -on -one. In addition to going with Gary, guys, when I go with Gary to these car shows, I don't have to say, God, which one of these people do you want me to witness to? They come to us. They come to our booth. They see my hat. They're not familiar with it. What are you not ashamed of? They see my shirt. Oh, what's this about no man left behind? I get to tell them. I get to invite them. It's wonderful. So... Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this group of men. And I thank you for this organization that I can be a part of it. I thank you that this shirt and this hat provokes people, really, to come up and initiate the conversation. <laughs> I praise you for that. I praise you that anything that was said that was not of you, you just erase it from their memory. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.